Yo, yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Jimmy and today I'm going to be going over this handout here that I received when I was a student taking my sketching classes and not only is this like a sketching handout but it's also a good sheet to go over things that you should really consider when designing an aspect of products different aspects of products and um, it's all about styling cues so let's take a look at what it says so again, this is about style, styling cues, visual semantics, and brand language. The style brand language of the overall distinctive look of an object is the total visual impact of how these areas have been treated. So just talking about uh, the different forms, different form language, style. I personally call it theme of the product and applying them to each of these uh, individual areas of a product. Each area has the potential to add the style, but not every area needs to be given a distinctive uh, treatment. Most, success, most successful designs emphasize some areas and de-emphasize others. As a rule, it is best to limit distinctive style and cues uh, to five or less in order to maintain unity so with all of these um, different components different areas of a product like if we're talking about you know like a bluetooth speaker you have the speaker area you have the body of the speaker you have the button areas uh, you have the charging ports you have all of these different areas and so you want to add your styling cues to them but if if you don't really want to add some to others maybe it's not as important you could really emphasize other parts then uh, that's what it's saying that you can do and it's saying not to use more than five or more uh pro probably five is a lot too uh you, you you just want the idea is to make it all come together i'm sure it's possible but it'll just be really uh, be really hard to actually pull off and accomplish because you want it to have it so where when somebody looks at your product or your design they immediately understand it um and they and they actually comes off as as they like the look of it and you know that's not really something that we uh that we kind of break down logically it's more of just a feeling thing you know when you look at a product that just doesn't look good it just looks you know it looks bad to us just immediately without even having us say anything and um that's just because that there's no unity or harmony or or, or all these things that i'm going to go over right here when analyzing an existing when analyzing an existing style or creating a new one, these are all areas to be considered. So if we take a look here, these are all the different aspects that we should be focusing on while sketching, while designing up the product. And uh, this is all related again to styling and brand language and surfacing uh, and the different components of a product so that we can really add the styling on top of them. So a huge one is proportional relationships between parts. This is really understanding the different sizes and scale of each part and, and making them a certain scale so that when you put them all together, it looks good and it looks harmonious. Um, external surface edges, separation lines and edges. This is something that I recently went over in my design study series. If you guys haven't checked that out yet, it's all about parting lines and really um, having learning how to use them in a way where it'll really make your products look cooler. It'll break up the surfaces and make them look more visually interesting. So definitely check that out if you guys haven't already. Uh, surfaces with character lines and character inserts, front caps and end caps. So just, you know, it's something that, that has the top and has the bottom of it. Uh, this is stuff that you guys can add into products. This is potential parts that you can do, but don't feel like you necessarily have to add them. But there are some things that you should have to have to add. There's some things that just are necessary. And these are things such as the mechanical interfaces, things such as air intakes, paper slots, uh, power plugs. This is really going based off of the idea of how a product works. And if you guys listen to anything about like what Steve Jobs said, he says design isn't uh, what a product looks like. A lot of people think that's, you know, all design is, is designing a product, doing, adding styling to it and trying to make it look good. But um, design is, he says design is all about how a product works. And so the design of it, the look of it, it's all 
should be coming from a frame of mind of how the product would work and there are some things that you just need to have you know like if it's for a phone you need to have it to figure out some way to for it to charge so or some way for you to interface with the operating system so that's the screen so just stuff like this you need to have and really need to consider which is you know really obvious but it's good that it's stated here and clear um, mechanical logic so this is really just uh, understanding how the things come together you know mechanical ideas because as a designer you should also have a huge consideration with mechanical engineering not necessarily like math and and and, and understanding that kind of technical stuff but more of understanding how parts come together how parts can be articulated and move and if you want this part to to run and slide and click you know you have to understand these type of mechanisms and that's all about the uh, mechanical part then we got graphic identity this is about branding this is about badging of your product uh, if you're a student i would highly recommend you guys add this stuff to your products and it'll just totally make your products look more professional and more real because at the end of the day they're just student products and you don't really plan on manufacturing them or making them and so you just want to try to make it as real as possible um, let's see physical interfaces handles plugs and knobs these are things that i've went over in my design study series definitely check those out if you haven't already but it really just shows a lot of good examples of how to incorporate and design these aspects into your product um, transitions between forms and subforms. So this is a huge one, guys. This is really just understanding and really making uh, your product very harmonious. Where if it has a handle, it looks like the styling is a part of it, and it's merging out of the larger form. Or just like that Mercedes video I made, where you see the giant grill and how all the parts wrap around and come out and budge into that grill. So these are all transitional things that we should really focus on and master um, so so you don't have to be a master of it just yet if you're still a student and you're still learning but eventually these are things that you guys are definitely going to be considering a lot when designing products uh, back plate backing plates control interfaces readout buttons uh, insert separation edges and frame transitions okay let's take a look down here so this part of the handout is pretty cool. It's really talking about the different steps that we should take as a designer in order to design our product. So this is super cool. Um, you know, like sometimes you don't want to design or pretty much every time you don't want to be designing the trim of a product when you haven't even designed how it's going to, you know, how the forms are going to be and what's it going to look like. So you really have to go through these steps when you're designing a product. And the first step is starting with form and the basic concepts, the overarching concepts, what's the variety, what's the repetition, the hierarchy, the density, the gestalt. So if we take a look at the bottom here, you, you want to figure out these forms. So do you want to make it more curvilinear, more rectangular, more angular? Do you you want to make it symmetrical, asymmetrical, geometric, or organic, um, uh, axis aligned or non aligned, simple or complex, linear, planar solid or a combination of it all so linear is like if you were going to make something that's very wiry and then hidden or exposed mechanics so if you guys take a look at anything that's more rugged has a more rugged feel like the samsung active phones you could see that they there's a certain style to that not only is it more bulky and 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 it looks like it has more muscle to it and more beef to the product but it also has um uh, what, what's called exposed screws and mechanics, which really shows off the parting lines. It really emphasizes all of the screws and how they're all exposed, rather than if you actually look at um, uh, mo other products out there where they're, they're trying to hide all of that to where it's just really showing off the experience and that it's a product and that, you know, that there's no real screws or, you know, they're trying to hide all of the mechanics of it. So it's really up to you to really decide. And these are the things that um, it's really important to be aware of and focus on when you are designing it, you know, and uh, if and then once you finish with that, when you move on to stage two, which is the surface, this means surface transition, surface character line and external surface edges so just playing around with the lines and and this is really important to me because what I found is that if you do have really nice you know lines that run through it whether that's parting lines or just cur character lines like form lines 
um, it allows the user to really follow with their eye where all of these lines are going and you know and, the, and then they're not even realizing that it's happening but it's all happening they're able to lay their eye your eyes on their product your product that you're designing and it just becomes a little bit you know more appealing more better more entertaining they could actually look at something rather than just if you don't have these things it's almost like they don't quite understand or know where to look at and then once you got that nailed down, you would want to move on to detail, which is the contour line, separation line, separation edges, separation inserts, uh, insert frames, character lines, and character inserts. So these are just diving a little bit more more detailed into your product, really understanding the different edges and the character lines. So just starting off a little bit more broad and getting more specific, more specific. So the last one is the trim where you're understanding the different materials, the different colors and different graphics. And you can modify these trims, adding a little bit of gray, uh, white and black, and then making it cooler or warmer, textured pattern, dull, reflective, opaque or transparent so again guys all different aspects the fundamentals of design you know don't judge this handout just by the sketches um or or, or the graphics design of it i remember as a student that's what i did and so i didn't really pay attention too much but as a designer now and going through the courses and graduating and being a professional i can understand how this page here is very valuable and the different aspects that we need to consider as a designer and the more aspects that you have have and is under your control and what you're taking you know the more care it seems that you're putting into your design and people can really sense that even if they can't articulate it that's something that johnny ives has really spoken a lot about all right guys if you learned a thing or two definitely hit that thumbs up button also leave a comment down below if you want me to continue something like this i have so many other uh, PDFs from my professor, David Tubner. And so I can, you know, create another video talking about uh, those ones and going over those ones. So leave it all down in the comments below. Also, if you have any questions for me, leave it all in the comments below if I can't get to it. And if you happen to know the answer to somebody's question, definitely answer it for them on my behalf. And um, it'll pre appreciate them. Let's try to make this a discussion and, and a place where industrial designers can all come together and really just work with each other ask questions if there's anything they'd like to know and also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and please share these videos with them if you know anybody that can benefit whether it's a, another classmate or a fellow industrial designer all right guys this is jimmy and i will catch you in the next video peace